Hello, I'm Michael Glass from michaelglass.com, where we focus on making informed decisions about our financial future. Before we begin our video, you want to start off with our disclosures. Any symbols you see today should not be inferred as a trading recommendation. No matter what form of investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, options, they all have a level of risk associated with them. Any strategies we show today are for informational purposes only. Future results are not guaranteed. And finally, any investment decision you make is only your own responsibility. Trade at your own risk. So this is our stock market technical analysis trading plan. In our video, we'll look at the past week's economic calendar and also look forward to next week. We'll see what happened as far as the most recent price action to identify key support and resistance price levels. We're going to look at the charts of the market leaders, Apple, Google, Goldman Sachs, Priceline. We'll take a look at those. We'll look at the dollar, gold, and crude oil charts to see if there's any leading sentiment. And finally, we'll have an education spotlight at the end. As we begin by looking at the week that was, we can see that all three of your major indices, the Dow, the Nasdaq, S&P 500, all fell pretty significantly for the week. The Dow was down almost 1,000 before pairing off a little bit on Friday. So there was a little pairing off of the losses on Friday, but it was pretty much sideways action. So the market ended down. There was a lot of selling this week uh, that benefited the dollar as a flight to safety. However, gold didn't find buyers. Gold itself was down almost 10%. Beginning the week, there were still concerns about Greece and its austerity plans, whether or not it's going to do enough in order to get the money. Uh, but really, here in the States, the FNC did little to inspire investors on uh, Wednesday. Uh, they did something, what they're now calling a twist, where they're buying and selling. But overall, uh, they did inspire the market, and the, the selling continued. As we go into next week, we're not really starting our new round of earnings for another two weeks, the next round. We'll start in about two weeks, the middle of October. As far as economic calendar, uh, we've got consumer confidence on Tuesday, uh, consumer sentiment on Friday, and of course, uh, in the first week of October, we'll have our jobs number. So that we could get some catalyst here uh, to pair off the selling, but we may actually find it uh, through some of our long-term support and resistance levels that we'll do show as we pull up the charts. Okay, as we begin with our daily chart of the S&P 500, we can start to see a head and shoulders pattern beginning to form in here. Uh, this 1120 price level is certainly uh, acted up as good support uh, since the beginning of August, and we retested it here uh, this week, and again, there's that, that, that uh, pairing off of the selling for uh, this week. But again, we can see, uh, I mean, that's a bearish pattern. There's definitely a head and shoulders in there. Uh, you can almost say triple top, uh, an M pattern, however you want to label it. Uh, if we break and close below 1120, I, I would definitely be concerned to uh, for the bulls. Um, even on the daily, even though that we're low, there is room to go lower. There is room to go lower. As we scale out to the weekly, We can see that resistance coming in from our downtrend line, 50 moving average acting in resistance. And again, we're now closing below the 200 moving out on a weekly. Definitely not good. But again, that 1120 is holding up, so we'll have to see if the buyers will come back in. Now, the weekly is a little bit weaker uh, than the daily, meaning that it looks like it wants to hook up. But there is a little room to go lower on a weekly also. Finally, as we go all the way out to the monthly, Uh, we can see just the beginning of the selling from May, sell, 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 and then now the 200 moving, which held up here in uh, August, and now being tested here again on uh, September, will this hold up as support? Uh, if we break here, you can kind of see on the monthly that 1020 is our next uh, swing low here that we'll have to watch if we close below that 200 on a daily. But again, the monthly, you can see there's plenty of room to keep going lower here on the monthly on our indicators. Going back to the daily and now switching over to the NASDAQ. We see a similar thing, although not as quite as weak, but we can still see a head and shoulders in here, a double top. 
Um, but the difference is, you can see the Nasdaq is not retesting the lows from August. Um, it's still up uh, off uh, the lows just a little bit here. Um, we'll have to see if it closed below 2400, if we'll come all the way down here to 2300. Um, and again, room to go lower with our indicators. Coming over here to the weekly on the NASDAQ. Again, there's that resistance. There's our big candle here. And again, 2400 seems to be uh, uh, a place to watch before we test the August lows. And finally, on a monthly, again, selling from May. Notice that it's the 50 moving average that's going to be holding up here as support versus the 200 moving as it is with the S&P 500. Plenty of room to go lower with our indicators. So we'll see what this week and how we close out September for our candles. So with the market week, what are our industry leaders showing us about what the market wants to do? Starting off with Apple. Apple, um, you know, our last swing high was here at 404. <clears throat> Certainly, there could be a little psychological uh, support here at 400. Sort of air kissing the 20 moving average. But you can see the, the fall off with the market. Big gap down here on Thursday. Inside bar now. So, sort of like the S&P 500, if I were to go back to the S&P 500. Our uh, aggressive traders will look at this inside bar and say, if we break above 11.45, you know, maybe we'll get a run to the uh, 20 moving average. Now on Apple, we see something similar that we got an inside bar and maybe above 4.07, people might try to retest the highs. But again, that's going against the short term trend. Uh, Amazon's kind of doing the same thing, sitting at a previous support price level. Our horizontal support here at uh, 220. It's actually made it to the 20 moving average, putting it in inside bar on both Apple and Amazon. We're getting a down signal. So, you know, again, what some might say above 225, you might see some, some buying action. Uh, trying to fill this gap in here, but again, uh, you can see here on the market profile, uh, there is a vacuum here. If you get above 225 to run up here to 235, but uh, that's something to watch. It's not something I'm going to play. Google already below the 20 moving average, below the 200, back below all of that. It's found some support here in the, in the uh, low five teens. Uh, support price level, another inside bar, but um, this is one that I would just say sideways. So n nothing bullish yet. Uh, Apple and Amazon, we would say sideways. Uh, Google, I would say sideways to down. Goldman Sachs down. You can see the 20 moving average acting as resistance, uh, and the Dave Elliott ice hole failures. Each time we hit it, we've made new lows. So, you know, you might start thinking about uh, moves back up to um, the 20 moving average if we can get above 100, above 97. But again, that's aggressive in the opposite direction. Netflix, our, once our proud leader, now showing weakness. Look at that. So you have to start saying down. I mean, we've broken the 50, the 20, the 200, and now we broke the 500 on Netflix. Uh, people did not like this new pricing structure. I know I didn't, and I canceled uh, my DVDs, and I stuck with streaming. But you know, uh, and I got the email saying, you know, you thought the email they were going to send out, they were going to change their minds, but no, it just said, oh well, we're going to change our DVD to Quickster, and you know, so people did not do not like the new pricing structure going on with Netflix. And finally, Priceline. Uh, so we've got. Netflix down, Goldman Sachs down, Google sideways to down, Apple and Amazon sideways, and I will go sideways here for Priceline. As we talked about in our intro, we had the flight to safety in the dollar. You can see this nice move. And the thing is, two weeks ago, we drew this line in for you at uh, 7650-ish. 
and then we, you know, we shrunk it out and we drew this line to for you, which is up here at 79. We said if we can get it close above this, we move it. And not only do we get a break above it, we pull back, tested it, tested the 200, and we now we run up here to the 579. So and put in a little inside bar. So for our bullish from the dollar, you know, we probably had to start thinking about 81 next as far as a price level to watch. Uh, if it's going to continue making higher. But you can see uh, we're now getting into the highs for the dollar. Uh, we start the year uh, basically right where we are now. The dollar is basically on par now, break even for the year. And now we're going to start testing some of the highs from last year if we break above this 79 uh, resistance price level. So strong dollar probably needs a little pullback. Gold, talk about pullbacks. And, and we always say... You know, as it kept going, moving higher and higher, and then once we started putting in this sideways action, those of you who watched our video, we started talking about this uh, um, descending wedge that was being placed in here, and then we really fell out of that descending wedge. Um, now you guys start thinking about testing the 200 here. I mean, we were below the 50. Um, buyers are not coming in. Um, so I would definitely watch. You can see this little wick here is testing what's going on right here in this consolidation range uh, so yeah I'll start to start to watch this 1600 price level as the next area of support and then you know we have other ones identified but then we also have the 200 coming in here also finally uh, with crude oil uh, we've pulled back off of the 50 moving average and now we're basically air kissing the lows from uh, August, so uh, we'll have to see. You can see on the market profile that we're really accumulating volume here. Our point of control here is at 80, and we're really consolidating here uh, on our 50 minute time chart. So uh, we would really need to see some action above 82 to see, um, and we see that with our wick to see a move higher. As we move to our education spotlight, we're continuing to have our discussion about trading plans. And so, of course, we want to give a general overview. We've been talking about why you need a trading plan and how you have to follow the trading plan. But, of course, you know, we want to give a general description of what a trading plan is. And as you can see here, a trading plan is basically your formalized documentation of how you will implement your trading process. It's your business plan, it's your entries, it's your exit, it's how you're going to manage the trade, it's, it's uh, what markets you're going to trade, what type of uh, investment vehicles you're going to trade, it's your goals, your objectives, how you're going to manage it. It's all those things that are in your trading plan. If you can't answer those questions, then you're not really ready to trade. A lot of people focus a lot of time on setups, a lot of time on entries. But you got to know how you're going to manage the trade. You got to know what your goals are, how much money you want to raise. You got to know all of these things. So that is what an effective trading plan is. That's what you need to have documented. And that's how we overcome our fears and our emotional trading. As you know, you can find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. We have a page on Facebook, Are You Financially Literate? We have our free five-part video course where we talk about high probability trading. It's all about helping you design your own, which I hope will give you an insight to who we are as coaches, how we can help you go to the next level by working with you one-on-one -on -one to develop a personalized trading plan, help you to develop that trader's mindset so you can follow your trading plan day after day. And of course, uh, we do have a video course for you for $250, not $5,000, $2,000, $250. Why? It's got all the information that you see everywhere, everywhere else, an introduction to trading, what should be your trading plan components, the trading setups that are successful and high probability. It comes with a free coaching session to make sure that you understand everything. But again, you know, it's, as I always say, it's not about indicators. It's not about systems. It's about uh, your trader's mindset. And so that's why we're not trying to charge so much for the course. It's got all the information you need, but truly through our coaching and through developing the trader's mindset, you can take your trading to the next level. For our futures traders, we have a great broker for you. Uh, intraday margin low is three hundred dollars. So if you want leverage, this is the way to go. And finally, uh, charting packets for those who are looking to scan and find the, the latest movement of stocks. It works on both PCs and Macs. As we said, it's not about the system or indicator. Um, it's about the trader's mindset. And our coaching is all about helping you one on one 
conquer your fears, document your system so that you can be a consistent and profitable trader. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.